in the research of this influential human actually reiterated the fact that no matter what you decide to focus on as something you are passionate about and have absolute belief in, the people who discourage you from doing it will acknowledge you and encourage you absolutely when you achieve their definition of success in it. So don't give up. To be honest, you really have absolutely nothing to lose. But please, don't do anything illegal. Gracias. Ciao, guys. Ciao is Italian for hello, by the way. Welcome to the 30th episode of HMIH Podcast with yours truly, Damila Mapa. On this short episode, I'm going to be enlightening you guys on a very interesting personality, an Italian sculptor, painter, architect, and poet who didn't like school as far back as the 15th century. Well then, let's start learning, shall we? So, for those of us who had the opportunity to watch the TV channel Nickelodeon, would have seen the show or cartoon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Well, that, that's actually the theme song for the cartoon or show, anything you like to call it. And they also made a movie of it too, actually. There's a particular character, goofy and playful, yeah. His quote unquote father, who's actually a rat, named him after one of his favorite creative artists from the Renaissance era, Michael Angelo. Now I see why this guy was so famous and what for. Full name Michelangelo di Lodovico Buonarroti Simoni. That was tough. So we will just call him Michelangelo. He was born on the 6th of March 1475 in Caprice, Italy. He had four brothers and his father was a judicial administrator and obviously wanted his son Michelangelo to probably be a lawyer after finishing school, if only his father saw the future. At six years of age, his mother died from a prolonged illness and he was taken to a nanny where he lived with her and her husband, who was a stone cutter. This was where he got his first exposure to and passion for sculpting, as he said himself, If there is some good in me, it is because I was born in the subtle atmosphere of your country of Arezzo, along with the milk of my nurse, I received the knack of handling chisel and armor, with which I made my figures. Well, I'm sure that's not the voice he used to say it, but you get the point. Michelangelo was sent to Florence, Italy, to study grammar, but the dude would skip school and copy paintings from churches and also seeking the company of other painters. Michael decided to study more about creative art and sculpting through apprenticeship with different known artists in Florence, as Florence was at that time Italy's greatest center of the arts and learnings. Figures why it made some of the best creative artists and painters in history. From 1490 to 1492, Michelangelo attended one of the most prestigious academies in Florence, the Platonic Academy. A humanist academy founded by the Medici family, the rulers of Florence at the time. This gave Michelangelo great privileges, one of which was being able to study the anatomy of humans through dead bodies in the Catholic Church waiting to be buried. Yeah, weird, right? But this most probably had an effect in the almost perfection of details in his sculptures. Moving on, a few years later, at age 24, Michelangelo was commissioned to create one of his greatest masterpieces, La Pieta which is a picture of a Virgin Mary grieving over the body of her son, Jesus, which isn't part of the biblical narrative of the crucifixion. Oh well. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, this job was commissioned to him in Rome by the then French ambassador to the Holy See, Cardinal Juan de Bilheres Lagualas, and it took him just one year to complete the sculpture from a single piece of marble stone. Well, this definitely wasn't his only masterpiece. In the year 1501, after the artist Michelangelo had gone back to Florence due to some political stability, he was commissioned a job that two artists said was impossible to achieve and stayed undone for 40 good years. A 12,000 pound slab of marble that was supposed to be carved into David. The David in the biblical story of David and Goliath, by the way. Michelangelo confidently accepted the challenge and fantastically, sorry, I had to use that tautology, built a 17 feet fantabulous sculpture of David, which took him three good years to build. And this sculpture, after 500 years plus, still stands today in Florence, Italy, in the Galleria dell'Accademia, Florence, after it stayed in its original position, the Pisa della Signoria, the entrance of the city hall, for about 300 years. Wow, just wow. Michelangelo went on to work on amazing projects such as the masterpiece painting Sistine Capel Ceiling, which he didn't want to accept but to be honest, this painting is unexplainably fantabulous. He also worked on the tomb of Pope Julius II and numerous uncountable sculptures, paintings, architectural projects and poetry. A little bit of wisdom behind his personal life before we end this episode. 
Michelangelo once told his apprentice, however rich I may have been, I have always lived a poor man. Well, not everyone would see the numerous wisdom in this one simple statement, but all I'd say is, live a life of impact and you'd be remembered for your achievements more and respectfully than your riches. Just as everyone would, Michelangelo died in Rome in 1564, aged 88, just three weeks before his 89th birthday. Hmm. He was buried in Florence as he wished, but his amazing works of art still live on centuries after his death. But that's it on today's episode of HMIH Podcast, guys. I hope you found this as interesting as I found today's influential human. See you all on April 2nd, most likely, on another HMIH Podcast episode, as I have decided to make um, the HMIH Podcast about once in a month, probably, so I can do a lot of throwbacks. Thank you very much for listening, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you.